weaving as we go. And I'm going to share with you today a project that I'm working on that is, yes, I could do this on my big loom, but there's a, a very strategic reason why I don't want to. Um, one of the things when considering how you're going to weave with what you have, um, you need to take into consideration a few things. Um, this is a very large 195 yards of coarse spun sat down. It's from our sheep. And as you can tell, I don't know if you can see that, there's no core right there. The edge comes up over the core, which makes this a little bit weaker. Well, I want that core to be all the way through my work. So I don't want to cut this, and there's no way to pass this through my other uh, loom on the shuttles without cutting it. Part of knowing what you're using and what you're going to use it for gives you different options on looms. Now, one of the things that I'm making right now is a peg loom, and they're very expensive, but they're super simple to make. This is a scrap piece of two by four, and as you can tell, I have, and I'm hoping you can see that on the camera. RJ, can we see it? Um, yeah. The grid? Yeah, you can okay. see it. Okay, so what I did was I laid out a grid pattern, and I have one, two, and this is the third row. And pretty much, you're making holes to set dowels in, okay? And that's what makes it a peg loom. Now, I am going to, on mine, because I don't want to buy six or seven different peg looms, and if I'm gonna make this, I want it to be useful for all things. I'm gonna use a different diameter peg in this one and stagger them so that they're a little bit closer together. Same thing with this, so that I can make small scarves, big rugs, or medium-sized stuff for purses. Um, the smaller size would be using a smaller diameter dowel, okay? So your dowel would be um, a smaller size for every one of these holes. Uh, this is as far as I've gotten. I came up short on my dowels, and I got these at Walmart for, I don't know how many was in it. Was there four? I don't know how long it was, but I think I got four of them out of each um, piece of dowel. And each piece of dowel was minimal, like a couple of dollars. So I have these done, and I need to go and get like four more because this will only do half. Now, once you get all these set in here, you have what's called a peg loom. The only other thing that you have to do for a peg loom, and this is a good DIY project for kids because it teaches them how to use like a little drill and stuff. But the end of each dowel needs to have a hole to pass your warp through, okay? So these are kind of like your spacers and this is your warp, all right? So you have a piece of warp coming off of every one of these so you have to make sure not to put that hole too low down in then and i'll show you kind of how this works you basically pass this back and forth between each of the pegs and, and again it's going to vary by air, whatever size you have and then you just beat it down like this with your fingers okay there's no fancy method now i want to make a rug so i'd go back like this Okay, and then when you get further down, when the pegs get full and you beat them all down like so, you're going to pick this up, slide this down, and start again, and then beat it all together. So you'll make it <coughs> basically weaving. Um, now, am I going to make this narrow like this? No. Uh, you can do it with bulky yarn. You can do it with hand spun yarn. You can make scarves, purses. Whatever, the only thing you want to do is make sure that you are doing all the mechanics that the loom would do. So you want to have to pull it across there like the shuttle would, and then you're going to go back here. So um, there are reasons that you would use a peg loom. I am going to use this one to make a uh, rug out of, and it's going to be, what is it, 195 yards and it will be one continuous piece. So I'm going to get on this. I've got to finish getting my dowels, getting them cut, and getting holes in them. 
And then, like I said, I am going to add, you okay over there, RJ? Yeah. I'm going to add different ones so that I don't have to buy three or four different peg looms. That way I just, if you're not using the big one, you don't put the big ones in. You put the littler ones in. So it'll be one piece of wood that I have to keep track of. And then I have a little bag here that I've made that will keep all my things together. And then will be my peg loom. So um, I'll do some more weaving on it. I'll get these set and I'll get the other pegs. And we'll do some more updates on it later. Uh, I am going to warp it with this, which Grandma purchased. I don't know what her intention was. She never said to warp it on that other rug. So I'm going to warp it on here. So I will come back with a little bit of an update, but this is just kind of the background of what I'm working on today and where I'll get going and, and what it's going to be when it's done. So I'll see you all in the next video.